Hallelujah. We thank God for allowing our pastor to be in the house today. God is a good God. He's an old time God. Hallelujah. Just when we think it ain't going to be, God said it is. Hallelujah. Just before I get into uh, my particulars here, my sermon and everything, I just want to let everybody know that when you are connected to God, you got to be connected to hear what thus said the Lord. I had just came out of my prayer with God. My telephone rung. And I was asked if I would deliver the message. As pastor said, he'd give us two weeks or whatever. But when the phone rang and he asked me, I kind of went there for a minute like I had to be ready. But God quickened my spirit. And he said, trust. And I told Pastor, yes, I will. I will let the Lord use me. And I think my husband for being behind me. It don't take two, three weeks. All it takes is a yes. Thank you, Lord God. So as I stand, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, to my pastor, Lady Benjamin, Minister Jackson, the deepest of each and every one of you. I said it is a blessing to be here in the name of Jesus. I greet you in his name. We coming in the name of Jesus. And I thank pastor for giving me another opportunity to share God's word. Let us go to the throne of grace in prayer. Oh, kind and gracious Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, asking you to have your way in me, Lord God, asking you to decrease me, oh God, and you increase in me. Have your way, Lord God. Allow your fresh anointing to fall on all of us in this place, Lord God. <clears throat> Put our minds on you, Lord God. Put our minds on one accord. That when you come in like a mighty rushing wind, you will be able to fill this place. Because our minds are where they need to be. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O oh Lord. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. Amen. Hallelujah. Have you been redeemed by the Lord? Hallelujah. Well, there is a holy word. From the Lord. And it is found in the book of very, very, very familiar scripture. One that we all have grown up with. One that should be embedded in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. It is found in the book of John. Yeah, chapter 3. Come on, y'all know where I'm going. Yeah, starting with the 16th verse. That should have struck a nerve right there. Yeah. Through verses 21. And for your hearing, I am reading from the NIV Bible. When you have found it, would you please stand to your feet in reverence to God. Yeah. Again, I am reading from the book of John. There are many Johns. John 1, John 2. This is the John. Hallelujah. Chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. We don't want to get it twisted. Yeah. And it reads, verse 16, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Verse 17 says, God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Verse 18 says, there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's only son. Verse 19 says, and the judgment is based on the fact God's light came into the world. But people love the darkness more than the light for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. 
Verse 21 says, but, I like that, but, those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. Amen, amen, amen. And my topic for the sermon today is God's greatest gift. Hallelujah. God's greatest gift. And the key verse is verse 16. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Hallelujah. Perish is gone. Perish is yeah. No one. Done away with. It was there. But now it ain't there no more. You can't look for it because it is gone. But God said in his word that if we believe in him, we will not what? Perish. That means it's a mess to come. Hallelujah, Lord God. We will live on in Christ forever. And here in this text, we find God gave this greatest gift. His only begotten son. This gift was prophesied in the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Uh -huh. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Uh -huh. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, uh -huh. and shall call his name Emmanuel. Yes. Emmanuel means God is with us. Yeah. Not sometimes, but all the time. Yeah. And he will never leave you, nor will Thank you. Thank you, God. This gift that God has given us is, again, eternal. Yeah. Meaning everlasting. And guess what? It's paid for and for. Right. Jesus paid a debt that we owe and could not pay for. Hallelujah. What a gift. I mean, this is the greatest gift. The greatest gift anyone can receive. Yes. Without being in debt. Yes. You know, we're approaching Christmas. Yeah. And everybody looking forward to Christmas. Yeah, yeah the 25th of December. Yeah. We're looking forward to getting what? Gifts. Yeah. yeah, you want to receive these gifts that's wrapped up and you don't know what's in the package. And so you just want to be surprised. Sometimes you get something that you like and sometimes you don't. Yeah. But it's a package yeah. that's wrapped up. And it is a gift. Yeah. But this particular gift, we know what it is. Yeah. Come on, saints of God. Yeah. We know what he's given us. Yeah. So you don't have to wonder what's inside yeah. the box. All you got to do is receive yeah. the Son of God yeah. and you shall have. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord God. I thank God for the gift. Hallelujah. Yeah. I ain't just on the 25th of December to receive a gift. Deacon was all in my sermon this morning when he was saying about you don't have to wait until a certain time to receive. This gift is every day. Just in case you didn't know, I'm a serve notice to you. It is 365 days a year. This gift is available to you and it is available to me. So don't you think you gotta wait until the 25th of December to receive the greatest gift. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you for setting aside the time that he came into the world. We don't want to get it twisted. But God said when he gave him, it's open to everybody. Hallelujah, Lord God. And verse 16 again is so powerful. For You know, this is how God showed how he loved us. You know, he gave his only begotten son that we won't perish that we would have eternal life. And that's the best gift we can ever receive. This gift is for us to live with Jesus forever. God wants us to live with him forever and receive all the blessings he has for us in this lifetime and in the next lifetime. After our physical death, 
Yes. Nobody want to talk about the physical death because you, you want to be here forever and ever and ever. Well, it's not going to happen. So tell you now, receive that gift so when it do happen, you will be able to do what? Live on forever. You will have eternal life, but not on this side. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm living to live again. Yeah. I'm living to see my Savior. Yeah. I'm living to bow down to him. I just want to see his face. When he say to me, well done. I'm claiming that thing. Hallelujah. My good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over what? Just a few things. He didn't ask us to be faithful over everything like he is. Faithful over just a few things. Come. Oh, glory be to God. He ain't going to tell me to come in and tell me to depart from me because you are fine. When he say, welcome. That means come in. Somebody come to your house, you open the door, you say, welcome, you let him in. Yeah. And God said he stands at the door and he not. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you open the door, he will come in and he will suck with you. Yeah. But you got to let him in. Yeah. Hallelujah. We talk about the greatest gift, right? Which is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Do you know Jesus has the gifts for you that's paid for and for? Yeah. They're for you and they're for me. And I want all of them. Hallelujah, Lord God. Because whatever God has for me, I know it's great. Even if I'm down in the valley, he's being glorified. Yeah. You can't thank as always when you on top and when you got everything. Just like Pastor said, I'm telling you, everybody was all in everything. The songs, the message, everything is all in my sermon. Just like we thought about the DJ. Yeah. My heart went out to him. But most of all, my heart went out to his family. He left a wife. He left three children. He had a mother. He had friends and family. It was just all about him, I believe, at that time. But I still pray for his family because they need the strength right now. At this particular time, people are going through. We just don't know. We're all out here looking good. Yeah, I'm standing up here looking good and sounding good and breaking the word, but you don't know my story. You don't know what God has taken me through. But blessed be the name of the Lord. He is with me. And when I know he is with me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. You will not have me do something against my God. Because my body belongs to God. I am the temple of God. And what I put in me represents the greatest gift. Hallelujah. So don't be the twisted face of God. Line yourself up. So when God comes, we will be ready. Let's be reminded of what this season is all about. It's not about a gift that somebody is going to just purchase and give you. That they took their light bill money, they gas bill money, and we're trying to make somebody happy. And you broke, busted, and disgusted because you went out and did something you had no business doing. Love comes from the heart. It don't come from the purse. Because the purse can run dry. But God never ever runs dry. Come. Come to the river where the water flows. Hallelujah. And you can get everything you need from who? This greatest gift. Oh, glory be to God. And the reason for the season is about Jesus. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He is our beginning and our end. Jesus is the Lamb of God. Revelations 1 and 8. Hallelujah. Jesus is Emmanuel, Matthew chapter 1, verses 23. Jesus is Jehovah Jireh. He will provide. I know he'll provide because he has made a way for me. He has made a way for you. That's what he said he would do. So walk in the gift of knowing. Let's look back on our lives for a minute to see how we thought of Christmas. You know, when we were younger, we, we had no idea. But somebody was praying for us. And God was looking down on us because he created us over in Jeremiah tells you that I know the plans I have for you. How did you, before you were even formed in your mother's womb, I knew what I had for you. 
So we didn't have a clue back then as to how uh, we should look at the birth of Jesus. And I'm going to say Christmas because we so geared on Christmas and celebrating this Christmas with all this stuff. Yeah. We're expecting, you know, when we were young, we was expecting the gifts to be under the tree, you know, wrapped up and looking all good. And we would look for all kind of toys and everything. We were just because we was kids. Yeah. Some of us was teenagers. Yeah. Some of us <laughs> grown. Yeah. And you still expected these kind of things. Yeah. When I was a child, I did child's things. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Now that I'm grown, I put it away. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you remember when, when I remember when I was a little girl and, and I couldn't wait for Christmas. I couldn't wait to get this good fella box. Oh, don't y'all get the good fella box. Well, we got the good fella box. Yeah. My family, we couldn't wait to get the good fella box. Because it had a dial in there for me. It had some undies in there for me. It had candy. It had clothes. It had socks. It had a book. Or it had a game. It had some of everything to keep me entertained. And I was excited and I was happy, you know, to receive the good fella box. You, you know that good fella box. It, like I said, it meant the world to me because it was the greatest gift that I could receive. And my mother, she didn't have to pay anything for it. Somebody else paid it forward. That's what I'm talking about. We have to be a blessing where we can be so the less fortunate can receive. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord God. So we thank God. And my siblings, of course, and my uncle and all of us, we received it. We ain't ashamed for where we came from. Hallelujah. Because that's what got me to where I am today. And God got greater gifts for me because they're coming from the greatest gift could ever be given. Yeah. Did you receive a good fellow box? Yeah. Okay, all right. So then you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah, Lord God. And another time I can remember when I was a little girl was on Christmas Eve. Uh, you know, we can relate to you, you, you want to go to sleep and then you don't want to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. But you got to go to sleep because Santa Claus is coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Santa Claus ain't going to come if you woke. He's going to put some pepper in your eyes. You remember that was the story. So you got to go to sleep. So Santa Claus can come down the chimney. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I'm rolling up still trying. Hallelujah. But because they said he was coming and how he was coming, I can't have he came. Just come and pray. Yeah, like you got there. Yeah. Pray for gifts. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord God. So we wanted him to come and bring the gifts. And then not only that, I'm looking for him to eat that cookie yeah. and drink that milk. Yeah. Can you imagine Santa Claus going to everybody's house that you know he had to eat that cookie? So he might not have eaten it all, but he did take a bite. So let me know. I've been here. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord God. And boy, was that the good old days. God is just so good. And this is the season for Christmas. All right. Don't stress yourself about buying gifts for everybody. Going into debt and regretting what you've done. Don't live above your means. Have a budget. Yeah. This is a time when we will be loving on one another. If we haven't loved on anybody before, love on somebody. Don't, don't neglect Nobody. I don't care who it is, what they've done to you. We got to show love. Yeah. Our lights need to shine. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. Yeah. So don't allow gifts to get in the way of you being where God wants you to be. Because we read in the word where your love has to be shown. Yeah. That will let people know that you have received this great gift. Hallelujah. It don't cost you nothing. It's all been paid for. Yeah. Hallelujah. And Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, what a wonderful child. Yeah. He is the gift. Yeah. John 3, 16. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He is the light of the world shining through us brightly in the darkness for all the world to see. Yeah. That's one of your gifts in John 8 and 12. He is the hope, joy, and peace. 
that men is seeking. Yeah. You can give somebody some hope by encouraging them. You know, the mission ministry, we do this all the time. If we can't go because of the COVID, we're on the phone. We are reaching how we can to encourage somebody. Romans 15 and 13. He is the strength for us. Exodus 15 and 2. A savior was born, hallelujah, for us to live eternally over 2,000 years ago. So appreciate what Jesus did for us. On this day and every day, not just on what? Christmas. You got it. He is our shepherd watching over us, taking care of us. You, you know, you can take care of somebody. Especially at this time of year. We can do it. Yeah. Psalm 23 tells us he is our shepherd. Yeah. We know that scripture too. Yeah. Hallelujah. As you go about your daily life, especially during this special season of celebration, I encourage you to set aside a portion of your time, mm -hmm. your energy, yeah. talents, and resources to share that light yeah. and serve others. Jesus came to do what? Serve. We have to serve. Yeah. yeah. It can be as simple as wearing a smile or brightening someone else's day with what? A laugh. You know, laughter is good for the soul. It's good to laugh. And there's some people that you know, when they come in your presence, they just light you up because you know they're going to have you cracking up. They're going to have you laughing. They don't know if you're going through something or not, but just that particular time will help you out. Yeah. So we thank God for those people. Yeah. Still talking about the gift. Yeah. yeah. He is the gift from God showing us God's love for his people. First John 4, chapter, uh, chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. Well, while Christmas is such a joyous time of year for many, mm -hmm. it is also an incredibly stressful time for others, as yeah. we said. And we have the privilege to let the light of Jesus shine through us. When they need it the most. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's about the light. Yeah. It's about the light of the gift giver. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not about your light and what you doing. Yeah. Because if you line up with the word of God. Do what he told you to do. You will be rewarded. Because you done what was required of you. Yeah. Again. Jesus is the gift. John 3.16. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So hopefully and prayerfully we got. What we came for today, we know next Sunday is going to be that Sunday that everybody is so looking forward to. But we're going to put our mind on what? Today? We're not going to just look forward on December 25th and think that you're on point because you made it to that day. God gave us this gift. Hallelujah. So as I close, I say to you, Matthew 5 and 16. Let your light so shine before men yeah. that they may see your good works. Yeah. There it is. And glorify your father, my father, our father, where is he at? Which is in heaven. Sitting at the right hand of the father, interceding on our behalf. 24 7, he's right there. We can't do it too many. But great is the one. That who is sitting there for you and for me. This is Christmas. Let your light so shine. Hallelujah. We, we're busy, y'all. We got responsibilities. We got big things to do. You know, stuff pop up in our lives every day. But even in the midst of our own busy schedule, we need to do something extraordinary. Have you ever stepped outside the box and did something greater than what you have done before? Or are you just continually doing the same thing just to get back? Extraordinary. Hallelujah, Lord God. There's abundance in God. God wants you to go higher. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We can share the love of Christ with others and make their lives a little bit better. What kind of impact would you make this holiday season if you decided to be happy and full of joy everywhere you went? Think about that. Yeah, what if you look, uh, uh, took an extra minute to talk to that person at work, the one that is lonely and going through difficult times? 
Hallelujah. How would it make someone feel if you text? You know how people like to text? I like to call you on the phone because I like to hear your voice. Because sometimes God will let you hear what a person is going through when you talking to them. The Holy Spirit will connect and then you will be able to respond. But when you text me, I'm doing okay. I'm fine. Those words is telling me that you are doing good. But really, those are just words. But when I hear you, oh, glory be to God. I know, uh-uh, there's something wrong. Hallelujah. So I say you can call them, but they text them today. Whatever you need to do, just do it. Just pay it for it. And then just pray for them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. What, what it means for a struggling family to be surprised by you. Hallelujah, Lord. Don't wait for them. You know you know they're struggling. Be a blessing. Not just during this season, but all year. After all, this is what Christmas is really all about. Just as Jesus came to love and serve. All of us by giving the greatest gift. Yeah. He has given us yeah. life. Yeah. We can give ourselves because his life and his life dwells where? Inside of us. Yeah. It's our time to shine. Yeah. Hallelujah. Our Lord and Savior. Yeah. He was so human, y'all. Yeah. He could die on the cross. Yeah. But he is so divine. Yeah. He could come back to yeah. life. Yeah. Woo! Glory and conquer death and never die again. Hallelujah. Jesus died for your sins and he died for my sins. Hallelujah. He redeemed us back to God. Hallelujah. He was crucified on the cross. Glory be to God. They beat him. Oh yeah, they beat our Savior. They hung him high. Hallelujah. They stretched him wide. They pierced him in his side. For you and for me, he died. Oh, glory be to God. They thought they were doing something. But this was designed by the greatest gift of God. Hallelujah. They laid him down. Glory be to God. They put him in a borrowed, brand new tomb. Oh, glory. He laid there for three long days. Hallelujah. I say the father for one, the son for the second, and the third day was for the Holy Ghost, which is what he left with us. Oh, but that's not how the story ended. On the third day, glory be to God, whether it was a Monday or Friday or Sunday or Tuesday, he got up. Hallelujah. With all power and both heaven and earth is in his hands. We thank and praise God for going through for us and allowing us to receive the greatest gift that could ever be given. Hallelujah. May God add a blessing to each and every one of you. May God take you to another level in Him after knowing that you too can receive what thus said the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. The greatest gift. Wow, we're always looking in this season for gifts. Uh, but if you could introduce somebody to Jesus, it will surpass any and all gifts that they could receive at any time. And what I like what you said is that you don't have to wait until Christmas. You can receive this gift today. And so as we extend the call of discipleship, that means those of you who have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you, you're struggling and you're trying to make ends meet, you're trying to make a difference in your life and somebody else, but you feel that something is missing but then that missing gift could be Jesus yeah. and so we offer him to you we extend yeah. our hand to you say give us your hand and give God your heart and if this church is a church that you'd like to continue to show your working out of your soul salvation this is a great place to come yeah.